Hello and welcome to the Build SD Access Fabric video series. This is episode two, Catalyst Center and Identity Services Engine Integration. In this episode, we'll introduce the purpose and function of Catalyst Center and ISE, and then we'll look at why we might choose to integrate them. And finally, we'll finish with a demonstration of an integration. For those that may be unfamiliar, Catalyst Center is a campus-wide and wireless network automation and visibility tool. What this means is Catalyst Center can configure, manage, monitor, and troubleshoot hundreds or thousands of network switches and wireless access points in traditional carpeted office spaces or less traditional environments such as factory floors, roadsides, warehouses, and the like. Identity Services Engine offers the services of network access control, identity management, and security policy enforcement. When users and devices connect to the wired and wireless campus network, they should be authenticated and authorized before they're allowed to start communicating on the network. This is otherwise known as network access control. And in the case of ISE, it can demand credentials and a range of attributes associated with every endpoint connecting into the network. Those credentials and attributes can then be compared against a suite of policies in ISC. And depending on what policy is matched, a level of network access is granted. In the campus, network access control doesn't happen by accident. Traditionally, it requires an administrator to configure each access switch and each wireless access solution to interact with ISE and the commensurate configuration installed on ISE. And this has the potential to be very demanding of skilled resources who may spend days or weeks configuring NAC on a device by device basis, not to mention the potential for human error, which leads to inconsistent outcomes. And this is why we would recommend integrating Catalyst Center with ISE because once that's done, Catalyst Center can orchestrate in an SD access fabric with a few clicks of a button end to end network access control across thousands or tens of thousands of devices, representing a significant time saving compared to the old world manual configuration methods. One of the other benefits of an SD access fabric provisioned with Catalyst Center and ISE is the ability to implement group-based policy. For each endpoint that successfully authenticates into the network, in our ICE NAC rules, we can assign a group tag. And then based on these group tags, we can build rules to say what groups can communicate with what groups. And this in turn gives us the ability to control endpoint to endpoint communications which is fundamental to the zero trust minimum necessary access principle and underpins our best security outcomes. Finally, I'd like to highlight that Catalyst Center and ICE integration also enables AI endpoint analytics. We won't dive into what that is in this discussion. We'll get to that in another video. But for now, what we can say is that it gives the network administrator visibility into what all endpoints transacting on the network are. And that's particularly important for unmanaged devices like IoT sensors or contractors or third party devices where we have no visibility into the operating system. We have no management agent. We have no posture agent. So the only way we can determine what those things are is to look at how they transact on the wire. And that's what endpoint analytics does. It analyzes communications and then makes assertions about what things are. And of course, you need to know what things are in order to be able to apply effective policy to them. The majority of real world SD access implementations do use ISE. However, in your scenario, if that's not possible for some reason, then you may be able to proceed without ISE and or with a third-party NAC solution. There is trade-offs though, you'll lose group-based policy. In other words, you'll lose 
micro segmentation using group tags and you'll also lose endpoint analytics. Because it's a bit of a corner case, we won't explore SD access without ICE in this video. However, we will circle back in a future video in the series to explore pros, cons, and design options. Before you start your SD access deployment, please review the compatibility matrix. The URL is on screen there, and I'll put it in the notes below the video. The compatibility matrix recommends a Catalyst Center version, ICE version, and patch level for SD access. Please also note that the compatibility matrix does update from time to time, so it's worth going to check the live online version rather than referring to this screenshot. If you have any questions about what has been discussed in this video or what appears in the demonstration that follows, then please feel free to navigate to communities and search the existing discussions or start a new one. I'll put the community's URL in the notes below the video. Alternatively, we have our partners, sales team, and CX team that I'm sure would be happy to answer questions. All right, that's enough slides. Let's get into the demo. We begin with a factory default Catalyst Center. Logging in, we can then navigate to the hamburger menu, system, settings, and then authentication and policy servers. Here we can see currently there is no service present. So let's add an ISE to begin the Catalyst Center to ICE integration. On the right hand side in the sidebar, we can enter the ICE primary pan IP address, username, password, and FQDN. We can also see that there's some advanced settings here. We won't explore what these mean in this particular video, but we might come back in another video to dive deeper into these settings. Once we add the ISE primary pan, we receive a workflow here showing the steps for ICE integration. Catalyst Center has flagged here that it does not recognize the certificate offered by the primary pan. We can explore that certificate, and assuming we're comfortable with it, we can go ahead and accept the certificate. After a moment, the integration workflow will complete and we can now see in the authentication and policy servers list that there is an active ISC integration. We can confirm this integration by going to the ISC user interface, logging in, and then navigating to the hamburger menu, administration, PX Grid services, client management. Here we can see the center entry, PX Grid client, with a description of Cisco DNA Center ICE Bridge service. Now, obviously that description is out of date and it needs to be updated in the automation, but nonetheless, we know that both from the Catalyst Center side and the ICE side, that the integration is active. We can then go back to Catalyst Center, Hamburger Menu, Policy, Group-Based Access Control, and here we can see this banner across the top saying that in order to use Catalyst Center as the administration point for group-based access control, which means SGTs and SGACLs, Catalyst Center must migrate policy data from ICE. Now this is necessary even if there has been no previous SGT and SGACL work in ICE. So there may be some configurations present or there may not, Either way, we have to start the migration. So let's go ahead and do that. We receive a pop-up, we can choose yes, and then the migration commences. After a short wait, we get a banner across the top saying migration is complete. Now, group-based access control policies can be managed in either ISE or in Catalyst Center. The majority of deployments use Catalyst Center as the administration interface, but if we wanted to change to ISE, we could click on this group-based access control configurations hyperlink, and here we're given an A or B choice, where A is Catalyst Center and B is Identity Services Engine. For this video, we'll stick with Catalyst Center as the most common deployment scenario, and in a future video, we'll go and explore scenarios where you may wish to use ISC instead. We can then navigate to the Security Groups tab, here we see Catalyst Center has learned security groups from ISE. If we go to access contracts, we'll also see the SGACLs, 
learned from ISC. And then finally, if we go to the policies tab, where we have source SGTs in the vertical and destination SGTs in the horizontal, here we can see that one loan deny policy has been learned from contractor source SGT to contractor destination SGT. All of the other cells without color are currently implementing the default micro segmentation policy, which is shown in the top right corner, default permit IP. And that concludes the Catalyst Center to ICE integration discussion for this video. I hope it's been useful and I hope that you join me in the next video for design menu discussion. Thank you and bye for now.